Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with now my co-host. And today's episode is why some people don't get it about free will. The idea is like the basic concept of why we don't have free will is so simple, yet you have PhDs, you have major institutions that just really can't understand this. So before we get into this, let's just briefly go through what we mean when we say we have a free will, um, why we don't, and why, why this is important. Um, so now, why, why don't you start us off? Um, what do we generally mean when we have free will? Free will means you can make decisions independent of your genetics and your conditioning. Okay, that's one way to say it. Another way to say it is that basically, if we had a free will, we'd be morally responsible for what we do. You know, we'd be ultimately morally responsible. Um, <clears throat> Okay, and what the basic reason we don't have a free will is because basically everything that we think, feel, say, do has a reason. There's a reason behind everything. There's a cause to everything. So what happens is you have a cause to anything you say, think, feel, do, and then there's a cause to that cause. It's basically chain, a chain of cause and effect. Um, and it, this chain stretches, stretches back to before we were born, back to before the planet was created, ultimately to the Big Bang. Um, why don't you explain the, the, the reason we don't have free will in terms of like the unconscious? In terms of the unconscious, well you can only have one thought at a time. So everything that's ever happened to me from my childhood is stored, well you know, Sigmund Freud you know, popular, popularizes, it's it's like a mosh pit of uh, feelings and emotions. So you're not even aware of things. You can only be conscious of one thing at a time. So you don't even know, you know, so, uh, why you do things. I mean, I don't know. Is that a bad? I don't really know. No, no, exactly. It's like the idea is like because you can only be conscious of one thing at a time, yeah. or maybe a few. When you're making a decision, there's like there's a hedonic imperative. In other words, like is the decision going to like. Um, are you going to predict that it's going to lead to greater happiness, less unhappiness? There's a moral imperative. It's, is it the right thing to do? There's a whole process of, of decision making. Now, obviously, if if this stuff is all in the unconscious, and by definition, our conscious mind isn't aware of the unconscious, and that'll tell you pretty easily how the decision has to be made in the unconscious also. Okay, and... The reason this is important, um, I mean, our, our entire society, our entire world is, is, is like just completely mistaken about why we do things, about, you know, who we are. And to the extent we get this right, you know, we can just create a, a much, much better world. All right, so let's start off with this. Um, so like, you know, some of our leading institutions are completely mistaken about this. Um, what, um, for example, our, our criminal justice system. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> well, I would like to talk about newspapers and the media, but you want to talk about criminal justice? No, no, go ahead. When you say leading institutions, you, what are you referring to? I mean, well, yeah, the the media. Um, for example, well, uh, the media sells papers and sells news because they. I guess it's better to. It's more newsworthy to call people angels or evil, and it's it's sensationalism and it, and it sells. I mean, what other reason could there be? Well, I think, you know, I think that's one reason. But the other re another reason, I think, is that they actually buy into the idea that we have a free will. In other words, when, when people do something wrong, commit a crime, these editors, these newspaper people, they believe that, you know, these people who have committed the crimes or whatever are evil, or, you know, they, they deserve punishment. But I think a society that's not based on free will in their minds would not sell as many papers. It would just be a boring, I mean, this is my opinion, it would be a boring newspaper. Um, when you call someone evil or heroic, it just it just sensationalizes, you know, it stylizes, it, it adds the, the flair of, of selling, you know. I think, I think people can, can like... Heroes and villains, you know. Yeah, people can um, read news from two perspectives. One is like this emotional perspective, this sensational perspective you're referring to, that it's like, you know, it's kind of like a sensational, um, it's, it's, it gets their emotions in gear, whereas like, you know, to the extent that we didn't believe in this 
illusion of free will, you know, that whole emotional way of being of, of like, you know, ag aggressing toward each other and, and having all those kinds of emotions toward ourselves and each other, you know, they wouldn't happen. I'm sure they've played with it. I'm sure the editors and the guys who run the news and the newspapers have, have tried newspapers without sens heroes and villains and sensationalizing and hell and rotten hell and evil. And they've probably done studies that it's, you know, how important money is, that it sells more newspapers to call people evil and rotten hell than to just say he didn't have a free will and he's fundamentally, you know, innocent. Yeah. No, no. So money's running th this uh institution to why the question is why are institutions completely diluted i'm reading and that's my answer is that money drives money is the greatest ally to free will because it sells in the media no all right but there's the idea is like right now in other words in order to sell newspapers mm -hmm. and media that way they have to rely on this illusion of free will in other words our, our whole society pretty much acts as if we have free will and they blame ourselves you know they blame other people we blame ourselves so to the extent that um we would overcome this illusion then we would create a society a, a group of people that you know that the media couldn't do that with but wouldn't you find the newspaper more boring if you couldn't read about this guy's a an evil i mean they had a uh an article when Bernie Madoff was in trouble, they put him on the cover with like devils with a red, you know, you know the devil thing with the with the and a and a fork, and a and then the, and then the guy Sandersky, they said rotten hell. I mean, people like to read that stuff. What if the cover just said, um, "I feel sorry for Bernie Madoff because he was compelled by the entirety of the universe." I'm not sure it would sell as well. Well, the so from their perspective. They, they like to have nice houses and nice vacations and keep their wives happy. They want to sell papers. And, and, and selling papers sells advertising dollars. Yeah, no, but the idea is like their strategy for doing that is founded on people believing they have free will. In other words, let's, when, right. to the extent that people, you know, would overcome this, this illusion, then, you know, society would no longer... Buy those papers. Exactly. Would, you know, it wouldn't appeal, you know... You know, really getting down on people, really, um, you know, disparaging or, or insulting people or just, you know, blaming people in that way it just wouldn't. Um, so the know, people emotion. would have to stop buying the media. It would, it would have to come from bottom up. Well, the media would change. I think the media is going to cater to, to, you know, who we are as a people, as a society. So it would, you know, to the, when we're not blaming each other, you know, fundamentally and when we're treating each other with much more respect and with, without that hostility, that aggression, the, me, the media would cater to Okay, but to that. if you had the intellectual or the super intellectual only doing, reading the media, then you would be right. But most media uh, is, I don't want to say dumb it down, but, you know, for the masses, it's for the, it's for the lowest common denominator, it's for the... You know, from for the most people, they want to sell the most amount of papers. Now, if they just wanted to sell five papers to five guys like us, <laughs> we would buy the ones without the free will, but they wouldn't sell that many. Right. Well, the idea... And they would charge us like $4,000 a paper. So they want to charge 75 cents a paper to a million people a day, so they're going to dumb it down and make it silly. You know, evil, good, evil, heroes, villains... I know, but again, they're they're like operating under the current paradigm where where pretty much everyone believes in free will. So you know, once we overcome that, then there's not you know there are other like you know there's do you, other. Do you agree with me that the media is the ally of free will? That the media is proponent is is. Well, the media is kind of caught up into it because to it. the extent that everyone believes in free will, the media I, I think you know they're they're not very responsible to the extent they not do that. All. They're they're kind of like breeding animosity. So, and is all. the media causing the belief in free will, or is free will causing the media to print things like where, where, where's a where, where's it starting? Um, I think I think that basically our society, our world has had this illusion of free will for for centuries, and the media capitalizes on it. The media just basically, you know, exaggerates and mm -hmm. and sensational, sensationalizes the. Um, and it feeds into it. it's a snowball effect. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and you know, if I was I was like reading through an article by the American Medical Association in their Journal of Ethics. They actually had an article. They were like 
saying that, well, you know, they've found or they seem to have found some some processes in nature that aren't causal. And the, this is American Medical Association, and they're saying because of this, um, that gives an opening for free will. And that's like so, so absurd. What, what processes in nature are not causal? You know, I don't, I don't remember the, um, the exact... Um, so then it's random? Yeah, well, that, that's basically, you know, in other words, they were, they were disputing the determinism in a certain, you know, brain process or something. And again, like, I, w I was surprised that, you know, that the editors of this journal, uh, Journal of Ethics, didn't understand that, like, the only alternative to, ran to determinism is indeterminism mm -hmm. or randomness, and that's not going to give you a free will either. Yeah. So, um, so basically... Actually, I want to write that down. What was the name of the article? Uh, I don't know the name of the article. The name of the, the um, journal is the American um, Medical Association. The journal, what month? Journal of Ethics. Um, I don't know. It's on my website, actually. Because um, we should give free, uh, equal time to both sides of the argument here. So you're telling the people to look up the American Medical Association Journal. Um, well, yeah, if you go onto my website... Okay. What's um, your website? Causalconsciousness.com. Okay. <laughs> Exploring Illusion of Free Will, um, I, I list, you know, I list um, several um, major institutions like the American Medical um, Association who should know better that get this wrong. And so your website lists articles that are f arguing for free will as well. You're not just one-sided. You take. You, you no, I am. I'm completely one-sided because, like, the the, <laughs> the illusion true. of free will is so clear. It, it's so you know you right. can't you can't present a balanced argument. It's kind of, it would be like trying to present like two sides of two plus two equals four. You know you can't present but one side. It's so simple. Um, I, I mean, I have to admit, I've read a lot of articles of promoting free will, and they're, they're nonsensical, incoherent, and they don't make any sense. And I get a headache. You know. They're just gibberish, really. And yeah. They're very, very confusing, and they don't make any sense. Well, and and another thing, there was a, an article by Michael Shermer, who is the publisher of Skeptic Magazine, and Skeptic Magazine has a um, reputation for debunking things that don't make sense. That are and, and to hear him, you know, kind of like say that, well, you know, things aren't necessarily deterministic, so that leaves room for free will. That was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, what was it's on the site. For that? Um. I don't recall specifically, but, you know, that was the gist. I mean, a lot of times they don't necessarily have a reason. A lot of times people like Shermer in this article in the AMA, they, they, they dispute determinism. They simply say, well, you know, this process that they've noticed, they haven't been able to find the causal, um, you Link. know, right, the causal process to it. And, and because of that... Um, you know, that, that would leave an opening for free will. Now, obviously, they haven't thought out the, the issue completely because... But just because you haven't found the causal link doesn't mean they're not there. Exactly, exactly. And that's why, you know, this show, like, people who really should know this, you know, these are, um, this isn't just the AMA and Skeptic Magazine. This is, like, Scientific American Mind, Scientific American. Um, Scientific American Mind ran this cover story um, May, um, June of 2012, Who's in Control?, how physics and biology dictate your free will. It's basically disputing free will, but that's the Scientific American mind. If you go to Scientific American, they've actually run some, some um, articles, basically, um, they've run some articles that, um, that question, you know, determinism, saying like, well, if there's no determinism, that there might be room for free will. And again, the way, we, you know, we've explained this on so many shows, the only alternative to determinism is indeterminism or things not being caused, and that's not going to give you a free will either. So it's just like really perplexing how these um, mm -hmm. major institutions could get something so simple so wrong. So they don't understand causality or randomness. Right, and then you have to ask yourself, well, why, why is this so? What, what's going on here? Um, so a lot of times people, you know, the editors of these journals, of these institutions, um, our, our entire criminal justice system, as a matter of fact, um, the Supreme Court in a ruling said that, that free will is the law of the land. So, you know, our entire country gets this wrong. They, um, a lot of times people argue from desire. In other words, like, 
to some people, life wouldn't have meaning if we Wait, didn't you have skipped free over will. One. They have neglected to investigate this fundamental fact of human existence? Well, yeah. They, um, you know, these major institutions, um, they don't. Um, research this they don't think about it because like you know you think about it for five minutes and you understand that if things have causes and there is a chain of cause and effect that makes free will impossible okay, so do you agree with my earlier postulation and theory that the reason why they've neglected to investigate this fundamental is because the money is just not there it's not no it's not just about money it's about you know it's about the church it's about religion it's about how they are genuinely confused they genuinely don't understand okay. this you know and again um the the way to understand this is, is is to simply understand that if everything has a cause that makes free will impossible and the only option to things you know having causes is things not having causes and obviously that doesn't give you free will either so okay um, they're arguing from desires immature intellect Right, so... What do you mean by that? Um, in other words, some people say, well, you know, they wouldn't be able to find meaning in life if if we're all puppets, if we're all, you know, programmed. So they, they invent or they hold on to a fiction because they need to see life in a certain way that they feel comfortable with. They, they, you know, it's kind of like somebody saying, no, we don't die because they, um, they're uncomfortable with death. That's, that's, that's essentially what they're doing. They're uncomfortable with the concept, so they're refuting it, or they're just, you know, that makes it Oh, I see what you're them. saying. So, and, it's and, so unpleasant for them to think that they don't have a free will that they begin to argue they have free will because they can't fathom. It's too painful for them to think that they're a puppet. Exactly. So they're not arguing from logic... That's causing them to be incoherent because it's it's like they're saying, I want to live in a fantasy world because I like it better. Yeah. I love magic and I hate reality. Exactly. That's that's what they do. And and again, these are major institutions, major magazines, major newspapers. So there's yeah. almost an addiction to fantasy and magic and illusion. You know, I, I think... It's like an addiction. I think, you know, when you consider that half of the population in the United States believes in, in Adam and Eve versus evolution, um, creationism versus... Yeah, we're, we're, if, if you bring people up religiously based on these religious myths, mm -hmm. then you can pretty much get them to believe pretty much anything regardless of whether it makes sense or not. <laughs> and um, it's unfortunate because, you know, like in school, they don't, they don't teach them to think. They don't teach them to, to, to understand this. I think this is a very good point, this point number uh, four. People argue what makes them feel best about themselves internally. And if it feels better for them to believe in free will, they're just going to argue. They're not listening to the logic, the coherency, you know, the, the gibberish of the pro-free will. You know, they just want to believe in it so badly that it gives them rose-colored glasses to believe in it. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where they'll argue almost anything you know, indeterminacy, quantum physics, they'll just say anything because they're so desperate to believe in free will. Right, now... Instead of the truth. All right, so that's, I mean, and one reason why they've been able to do this for decades and centuries is because they've really never been challenged on this until now. You know, this year, last year, 2011, 2010, is the first time in the history of the world that, um, that free will has been challenged refuted you know systematically and pretty pervasively you know, on the internet in other words i'm not sure that this could have happened without the internet but that's, yes that's what's happening Brilliant. Now. oh yeah without the internet and i got news for you this is only going to get more and more in favor of unfree can i say unfree will because Absolutely. It's not, the, the reason is is because Quite frankly, they don't make children like they used to. Everybody going forward is born with the Internet, right? Yeah. Every child that will ever be born, so they can Google whatever they want for the rest of time. So because you started the meetup group in Manhattan, I was able to find you from the Internet. Yep. And, and which that, was only a few years ago. Oh, yeah. So oh, multiply yeah. that by infinity. The rest of time, anybody can Google so someone else can start a meetup in another city and... 
Philippines, Japan, Australia, about exploring the illusion of free will. It's just going to... The, the old guard doesn't really appreciate that the internet, the, the flow of information is out there now. That's a very good point because basically... You don't have to, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but you don't have to... <laughs> <laughs> the, you don't have to go to your library and go to an encyclopedia and check out a book called or look in the encyclopedia for the definition of free will. You just go to Wikipedia and and, and make up your own mind. It will be yeah. a lot easier because but, and then your show and my book and your book, the, now that the information's out there, this whole thing is just going to go to a tipping point very soon that there's no free will. Right. The, the major institution that's um, gotten this wrong and that, you know, basically is responsible for everyone believing that we have free will is, is religion, you know, the church. But they don't make people all. like they used to. That's what I'm trying well, to tell you. The idea is like with religion, you know, people were taught this, but then they weren't given the chance to like debate it, you know. And now you can go on the Internet. You, you have people like my website. You have different um, websites where people know this. And so, like, you know, for example, there's there a Baptist church, Baptist University. They just changed their name from Free Will Baptist University to something else because they wanted to attract more students. So, in other words, yeah, because of the Internet, um, religion no longer can just, like, say, well, yeah. we've, you know, we've got a lock on this knowledge. I just want to show, like, all right. 2004 to 2009, there were about six articles in major um, publications like Psychology Today, The Economist, um, Science Magazine, Foreign Policy, and Sal Salon Magazine. Okay, 2010, it increased to about, I don't know, eight or nine. Okay, 2011, I think it's because of the Arab Spring and, and Occupy, there were very few articles. But then we go to 2012, there's over 30 you know, by major, major publications. So that, and you can't turn this back. I mean, this, this is the first time in history that this has happened. It, it's monumental. And, and you're right. Um, it's just a matter, a matter of time until this really, um, you so, know. So just to extrapolate, we're to exploding the free will myth is gaining tremendous momentum. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. You're seeing an exponential increase in interest, articles, cover stories, books, and we're just getting started because you say it's in the last three years. Yeah, yeah. So by the year 2020, there'll be a thousand articles. What do you have? 30 articles there? Right, right. So say 10,000, then 10,000, 100. I mean, and you're right. I agree with you. I wrote in my notes. It's because of the internet because in the old days, if someone teaches you something, you take it as truth because you don't know any other way. But now if you just have it, the smallest iota of curiosity and you just hear something, you'll, you'll Google it and research it and you'll get other ideas and that creates other ideas and other ideas and then you google that and you're just the truth will come out right now these you know this was a new scientist the first cover story ever um this was 2010 or 2011 in april this was actually one of the the ones that, that came in through 2011 and then you've got 2012 scientific american mind another cover story refuting free will and so like what, what's put it over the top is um Best-selling, three-time best-selling author Sam Harris came out with this book, Free Will, in March of 2012. And once this happened, that's, that's you know, to a great extent responsible for, for all this, you know, major coverage. And you're right, you can't, you can't go back. We've gotten to the point where the refutation of free will is so now well-known, so understood by so many people, you, you can't go back to the free will thing. And not to mention our TV show. Oh, yeah. Cable access. We're in Manhattan. Okay, so every other week we're live. You get this talking one every week, but then next week we're live. We take phone calls. Cable access has been around since the early 70s, Manhattan, because I grew up in Manhattan. They never had a show called The Illusion of Free Will. So suddenly now, a year, it's the first time, First, we're the first show in history. That's not a coincidence. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Anel and I are the only two people pretty much doing this. There's this guy, Tom Clark, who's got this naturalism site on, on um, the internet. But his, his main focus is just like a naturalist view of reality. And part of that, he refutes free will. But, you know, between our two shows, this show and Anel's show in Manhattan, our meetup, and Anel wrote this book just this year, the New Testament, uh, the Newer Bible, Testament. the Newer Testament, the Bible on, on free will, and then I came out with my book in uh, December 2011, Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, which is like the first 18 episodes of this show that um, you Pierce, know, Pierce. transcribed. Yeah, well, Chris Evans. This, this is a really good book. This is like a, a teacher in England, Free Will, um, an investigation into whether we have free will or whether I was always going to write this book. 
Uh, this is an, a really excellent book. This came out in, I think, November um, 2010. And this is like, again, if you, if you try to find books refuting free will, um, you'd have to go back years. And there, there's very, very few. This is, this is major. But they're all coming out in the last two years. Yeah, yeah. Last point. They gain their positions of prompts by remembering, not thinking. Just explain that in the last minute or so. Yeah, there's, there's two kinds of, like, people in the world in terms of, like, academic, academic achievement. I think s some people, they have very strong memories, so they remember a lot. So when it comes to taking tests, it's easy for them to just simply recite what they've remembered. That's how they succeed in school. That's how they succeed in life. Another kind of person is, like, their memory isn't that strong, so that basically they have to rely a lot more not just memorizing what's presented to them, but really understanding... Concepts. Yeah, Concepts. understanding the logic. And so the people who understand the logic of things, those are the people in the world who will understand quite clearly that free will is an illusion. The people who have relied on memory to get through school and life, it's going to take them a little bit longer. And it's not the that people they rely on memory just regur regurgitating what they've heard. Absolutely. They just, you know, they, they don't it's give... It's a knee-jerk it. reaction. Quantum physics, Heisenberg principle. They don't even, th you know, they just... Like, exactly. Like my brother, my real yeah. brother. <laughs> and, you know, it's perplexing because a lot of times these are, these are you know... Knee-jerk re These are intelligent people. There's knee-jerk reactions because they, they memorize something and they, they remembered this is how you refute it, but they didn't think about is it logical. Right. And again, like because of the Internet, those kinds of people, you know, they'll, they'll present, they'll say, well, you know, some processes are not causal or not random or, or not, you know, deterministic. They'll say that. And like, Without any thought. Right. Now, on the Internet, we can say to them, 30 seconds. fine, if the only other alternative to things being deterministic or causal is that they would be indeterministic or acausal without having cause, that doesn't give a free will either. So it's because of the Internet that they're able to be, you know, that the, the refutations of free will are impossible, are, are, you know, are being done. Again, this is, this is revolutionary. This has never taken place in history. And you'll see probably over the next few years how we will just develop a new paradigm, new way of thinking. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.